Welcome back. Today's lesson is about reported speech. I put that on the board right up here, and I already, already have two examples because I had to use color. That takes time, and I want to speed this along. Here are my two examples. This is called quoted speech. It's when you use quotation marks. Whoops, I forgot the quotation mark there. Let's just put it in. Better late than never. So quotation marks in the front of the words that came out of this person's mouth. So she said, I am happy with my job. That's actually the words that came out of her mouth. So these words are in quotation marks. Notice when you do this kind of quoted speech, you put a comma and then you put quotation marks and then you have the words that came out of her mouth. Then you put the period and then you put the quotation marks at the very, very end. So this is how you do this grammar when you're trying to quote somebody. Uh, so, indirect speech, well, reported speech is also known as indirect speech, so some grammar books will teach it as indirect speech. It's actually the same thing. She said, this is how you do it in reported speech. You say, she said that she, let me put that in blue, she said that she was happy with with her job. She said she was happy with her job. Now I want you to notice the things that changed here. Number one, there are no quotation marks because this is not her words, not the words that came out of her mouth. This is me telling somebody else what she said. So you'll notice a couple things here. Number one, I used the word that. However, the word that is not required because you have a subject and a verb after that. You know from other pieces of grammar that you can always drop that when there's a subject and a verb coming next. So you don't have to say that. You can say she said she was happy with her job. You'll notice that I changed to she. Why? Well, I is the person talking, but I'm not, this is not true for me. First of all, I'm not a woman. <laughs> so I would say she. She said it because she, I, she says I, but that's really she to me. She says I am happy with my job. I say she was happy with her job. So you'll notice that the verb change here, the am, changes to was. Now in reported speech, there are a number of verb changes. This, I put the simple ones on the board here because this is an introduction to reported speech, so it's very easy. Simple present goes to simple past. Also, you have these kinds of words which are possessive. Now, the job belongs to her, that's why she said my job, but it's not my job, it's her job, so I had to change my to her on the end. Let's look at a second example here. My son said, I'm playing with my toys. Well, my son said, my son said that, I'm going to put that in parentheses here because it's not necessary. My son said that he, so it's not I, it's going to be he, am playing is going to change to was playing, A-Y-I-N-G. I was playing. He was playing with, and his, H-I-S, and then toys, T-O-Y-S. He was playing with his toys. Notice the same changes are made. Number one, I don't have to say the word that because there's a subject and a verb coming next. I changes to he. Am playing, which is the present continuous, changes to the past continuous. You see that? Am playing, was playing. And the other change is any possessives, any possessive pronouns like my, change to be appropriate, which is his. Okay, also, oh, yes, I did forget the quotation marks on the end. Look at that. Twice! <laughs> Same mistake twice. Okay, so now we've talked about statements. These are all statements. I'm happy with my job. I'm playing with my toys. Let's have a look at questions. Uh, first of all, a yes-no question, Y-N question, question. Yes-no questions are just inversions. So, for example, if somebody said, uh, uh, she said, she said, comma, quote, I'm not going to use the colors this time, are your keys on the table? So that is a yes-no question. Are your keys on the table? Yes. Are your keys on the table? No. 
So this has a question mark here, and then the quotation marks come next. So you'll notice the punctuation always goes inside the quotation marks. Now when I report this speech, I say, she asked, whoops, S-H-E, can't spell anymore, she asked, not she said, but she asked. And why do I say asked? Because this is a question. So she asked, and always after asked, well not always, but mostly after asked, you need the person that she asked. So she asked me if. Now why if? Because for all yes, no questions, you're going to start with the word if. Uh, she asked me if, are your keys, if my keys were on the table. We're on the table. Notice, no question mark is at the end here because this is not a question. I'm telling you what her question was to me. I'm not asking you a question. I'm reporting to you what she said. So this is the second one here. The reported, the reported speech is not a question. Don't put a question mark. She asked me, that tells you it was a question. She asked me if my keys were on the table. Let's look at the changes. R became were, present tense, past tense. But are is before your keys. Are your keys, that was a question. It was inverted because it was a question. Here, my keys were, the subject is before the verb because this is no longer a question. So the subject must come before the verb. There is no inversion. So are changed to were, your changed to my, your changed to my, and that's the two changes that I made there. So when you have a question word, you, uh, a, a yes, no question, and you're reporting that, you have to say the word if, and do not do an inversion, and there's no question mark at the end. Okay, over here, if I have some room, there are information questions. Info, I'll call it info questions. Such as, um, where is the bus stop? So let me write that. Where? So somebody says, where is the bus stop? Let me just get rid of this. Uh, he said, he said, comma, quote, where is the bus stop? Where is the bus stop? So when I report this, because this is an information question, who, what, where, when, once again, I forget my quotation marks. There we are, quotation marks. So when you have a question like who, what, where, when, why, not just a yes and no, but a, an information question, because I can't just answer this, yes, where's the bus stop? Yes, that doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> where's the bus stop? Oh, it's over on that corner. See, that's an information. So when you're asking an information question, this is what you do. He asked, again, because it's a question, he asked, I need to have the person, and who's he asking? He's asking me. He asked me where the bus stop, whoops, that's not how you spell stop, where the bus stop was, W-A-S. No question mark on the end, just a period key. He asked me where the bus stop was. Where doesn't change, it stays where. Is does change, is became was. But notice it is not an inversion. Where is the bus stop? The, is the bus stop. You know when you have a question word, there's always this word. But this word goes with bus stop. The bus stop is where. But here, the bus stop is the subject, so was is after. This is an inversion. This is not an inversion. The subject is before the verb. No question mark at the end, of course, because this is no longer a question. One more thing uh, you need to know, and it's about commands. And this is also uh, pretty simple. You'll find this quite simple. If I say to somebody, maybe he, uh, he said, he said, comma, quote, open the window. Open the window. Now you could probably say please also. Open the window. But what, when I report this, this is a command. Notice there's no you here, so there's no subject to change. So what I have to do in this case is say, he told. Now when I say told, 
I have to have a person also. He told me to open the window. He told me to open the window. This kind of reported speech is probably the easiest kind because all you have to do is change the verb open to the infinitive to open. Don't forget to put the me here because after told there's always a person, just like asked, there's always a person after asked. He told me to open the window. So, pretty easy. What happens if it's negative? If it's negative, he said, don't open the window. I would say, let me just put that in here, don't open the window. Then I would say, he told me not to open the window. So, not to open the window. So, don't would become not. And notice, not goes before the infinitive. Now, I know there are some English speakers who want to say, to not open the window, but that's still considered incorrect. You should put not before the whole infinitive. So, you say, not to open the window. So, that is today's lesson on recorded speech. Uh, do the rest of the page. There's a lot more to learn about this, and do the exercises at the end. Bye for now.